It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday with Andrew Brandt. I got about a zillion Aaron Rodgers Packers questions for him momentarily. We are presented by DraftKings. As usual, they got ridiculous offers going on right now. Bet on the Olympics. Why not make the Olympics even a little bit more interesting? There's been some drama coming out of Tokyo. New week, which means on Friday, which is when we will do the final RTFP of the week. By the way, I got an email from somebody. Week one is when we go daily. Week one is when the Raw Soccer Football Podcast goes daily. But right now, it's very easy to get a show every day because you have the three Ross Tucker football podcasts. You have college draft. We talked about Oklahoma and Texas bolting the Big 12 for the SEC and the top prospects in the Big 12. We're going to record the Even Money podcast with Chad Millman from the Action Network today. Yesterday, I did my O-line rankings. Yesterday, it was just me and Brock. So the Fantasy Feast yesterday was essentially a Ross Tucker football podcast. It was just me doing my offensive line rankings, so check that out. And, of course, the aforementioned Andrew Brandt and his wonderful Business of Sports podcast. Friday, we'll have winners. Spread the word winner, at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod, sponsor confirmation email winner, and then the YouTube shout-out. That's just someone that subscribes to YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL and makes any comment. I'll give you a free cameo style shout out, which I love. Gosh, there's a lot going on. Let's start with Aaron Rodgers. Let's start with Andrew Brandt. Let's start with the big show. The big show. What a difference a few days makes, huh, Andrew? I mean, last Friday, it's so funny because knowing I was going to have you on today, I had already mapped out some of my uh, questions and it was like, this, what do the sports books know? Is he really going to retire? Uh, when is the deadline? What's a possible solution? You can throw all that out now. And you th- throw it all out. We know where we're at. He's back with the team. I, I guess like I like to do a lot of times, I just want to give you your patented blank canvas and not paint you in any specific direction. As always, people know, you can check Andrew out on social at Andrew Brandt. And, of course, the Business of Sports podcast where he'll go over every angle of the Aaron Rodgers situation and more. Just sort of your overarching thoughts, Andrew. Yeah, morning, Ross. I mean, this is something I'm going to, you know, stroke myself here with the ego. But you saw it coming. I said it all off season. He's not – the Packers aren't trading him. He can't trade himself. He's not retiring. So where does that leave us? <laughs> Not a lot of options. You know, I always say life is about timing and options. He didn't have that working for him. Um, I'm trying to, I think let's cut to the chase, Ross. I'm trying to figure out what he got out of this. Now, maybe Randall Cobb ends up being a Packer today or tomorrow. Fine. You know, that's nice. I don't know if the Texans really want Randall Cobb. (laughs) But... He got a, uh, you know, I suggested for weeks this void idea, even on Sunday, my little Twitter video while I was driving. But I thought the void would be after this year, which would would sort of clear the way for Aaron to pick his team next year, a la Tom Brady, and give him what he wants. And then the Packers, of course, would get him for 2021, which was their goal, and prepare love for next year. Well, the void is in the contract, as I hinted, but it's after next year. So the Packers theoretically have Aaron for two years. I have said all along, Ross, they'd only want him for one. They're going to trade him. And I've said this all along, they're going to trade him. But now they still get draft comp- trade compensation in March when they trade him. And There's a loose language about reassessing after the year, which to me says, okay, Aaron, you'll be involved in where you go for the trade. I've said this since the day they drafted Jordan Love. One, there is now an expiration date on Aaron and the Packers, which I've always thought is 2022. And two, they're going to have to manage this. 
and managing, it's not easy from my experience managing Brett and Aaron 15 years ago. It's not easy. So have they massaged Aaron? I guess, <laughs> I guess that's all it took. Giving him a void after next year when they don't even want him next year. I'm, I mean, listen, everyone says, well, if he's MVP again, if he's Super Bowl, they're going to keep. No, no, no. They're moving on. But they needed him this year because Jordan Love's not ready. So they, you know, people like to do winners and losers. The Packers won here, you know. And I think it's part of a bigger picture, which is I'm going to, I've ran it about before. I'll ran again today. We're just not there, Ross, with player empowerment. If the elite of the elite, Aaron Rodgers, can't force a better resolution than the one we have here, who can? It took Tom Brady 20 years. 20 years. He got the void. But it took him 20 years to exert some player power. And he's Tom Brady. So I guess that's, that's where I leave this, Ross. We're not there. When people ask me about Aaron Rodgers the past few months, I said, he's not James Harden. You know, it's not the NBA. We're just not there. Teams, my former team, still have the power. If we can have all this drama about Aaron Rodgers for four months, and this is what we get, why are we even talking about drama anymore? And everyone's going to be in camp this week. I mean, again, I'm not reveling that teams have the power. I'm just saying we're not there yet. We're not the NBA. We're not even MLB or NHL. The players don't have the power in the NFL. That's where we are. Yeah, I'm confused on the whole thing. I mean, this, <laughs> this, uh, uh, you know, they will review his situation a year from now. Now, Adam Schefter said something interesting yesterday on television about Aaron Rodgers gets his money next year no matter what, meaning if he retires because the Packers can't find him a good situation, he gets his money. I, I'm, I'm a little unclear on that. I, I feel like we need to have more hard and fast details come out. But my initial reaction, Andrew, was the same as yours, which is the Packers still have everything they want. Yeah. I mean – Voiding the 2023, he wasn't going to be there in 2023 anyway. He's not going to be there in 2022. That's my point. He's not going to be there. And again, these are negotiations, Ross. So did Dave Dunn and Aaron Rodgers come in saying, we want to void next year? And the Packers says, we're not going to void. And they don't talk and they don't talk and they don't talk and they don't talk and deadline spur action. And they compromise at a void after two years. I don't know. I, I, you know, what Aaron gets out of this to me, Ross, is an ability to be part of the trade in March or January, February. So Aaron Rodgers is not going to be dealt to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to upset any fans here. You know, pick a bad team that a player like him wouldn't want to go to. Okay, that's what this comes out. So. He'll be traded to a team he wants to go to. So I got to ask you, too, about the Randall Cobb thing. Because people are saying it's a done deal. It hasn't happened yet. Certainly it feels like this is the Packers placating Rodgers for some of the other personnel decisions that he hasn't liked. And he said, I, well, I, and I want Randall Cobb. Like, I feel like the negotiations, like, uh, void a year and – Free up cash space, and, and I want Randall Cobb back. But <laughs> he's still not traded yet, Andrew, which makes me feel like, you know, on some level, you know, the Houston Texans are like, okay, all right. <laughs> you know, like, uh, we know that they want him. We'll just we'll just get more from him. Yeah, that's the way I think, too. You're, you're good on the business of football now, Ross, because leverage, right? If the – so my thought initially was, and I talked to my son about this, is like, well, I hope the Packers called the Texans about it, Aaron about Randall Cobb before it got out, right? I, I hope they called him and worked out a trade like a low round pick or whatever it is before it got out that it's part of the Aaron deal um, because now it's out, you know. And now think about the leverage that the Texans have if they choose to use it. If they don't get 
Randall Cobb, theoretically, Aaron leaves, right? Aaron goes back to LA. You know, theoretically, that's what we're hearing. Like Aaron, the, the contingency of the MVP playing for you is getting this player. So the, the Texans theoretically have extraordinary leverage here. But I think it's a money thing too, Ross. You know, the Packers probably said, we'll get Randall, but, you know, we're not going to pay him that contract. So that's probably being worked out too. Yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. Speaking of the Texans, Andrew, Matt, you could do a whole business of sports podcast on the Texans right now. <laughs> I mean, wow. I, I don't even know where to start. Clearly on Monday, after he reported Sunday, all of the reporters, the Tom Pelissero's, the Ian Rappaport saying they're willing to trade him, but it's going to take a lot. Going to be three first round picks, going to be five players and or high picks, blah, blah, blah. I, I just, I don't know how you do it. And again, I want to give you a blank canvas here, but he's not in the commissioner's exempt list. The NFL issued a statement saying, Basically, he's allowed to be there. There's there's nothing against, uh, no discipline against him at this point. So he's there. He doesn't want to be there. It's awkward. The Texans want to trade him, but I'm guessing nobody's offering him what they want for him because they don't know his situation and they're not sure. That, I mean, what a mess, Sandra. <laughs> you know, I guess the one thing I'll say, give me the blank canvas, is – I've talked about this for 10 years now, the leave it to Roger thing, right? So teams have players that get in trouble. Very rarely, very rarely do you see a team discipline anymore. And this didn't happen in my day with Commissioner Tagliabue. Now it's all leave it to Roger. And when I say leave it to Roger, let the commissioner handle it. Let him take the heat. And that's where we are, I think. The Texans are kind of, you know, we got this guy. We like him. He's done some things we think are not great. Uh, we don't want to trade him for unless we get incredible value. But we're waiting on Roger. So I don't know about you, Ross, but I've seen the statements from the league about this are pretty, like, hard to decipher. Like, is he potentially going to be on the commissioner exempt list? Is he not? Do the Texans now have to deal with it? Is it all on them? Or are they still waiting from the league? To review, he's charged with a lot of a lot of civil complaints. And I think, and again, I've been tied up with Aaron, I think criminal complaints, right? I mean, I think there are criminal complaints against Deshaun Watson. And they're still reviewing and investigating. But I'm a lawyer, right? I'm a lawyer. Precedent, we talked about this. Precedent is everything to lawyers. Let's talk about the two cases that stick out. Ben Roethlisberger, something happened with a woman. No criminal charges, six-game suspension. Ezekiel Elliott, something happened with a woman. No criminal charges, six-game suspension. Okay? And now we're not even talking about some lesser names that have had these issues. You tell me how Deshaun Watson is not going to have a major suspension. I, I don't, how, like how, how does he not have a major suspension with those two precedents? Ben Roethlisberger, one woman, Ezekiel Elliott, one woman. Now, unless these 22 women are making it up and you prove it, come on. So I don't see him playing for a while with anyone. Now, maybe opportunistic teams say, okay, we can get a cheap trade value here while he sits for us instead of the Texans. Maybe that's going on. Well, I think there might be certainly teams that try to, to get well, him for value. Uh, there's three other things I got to ask you about, Andrew. Number one, Michael Thomas, Saints wide receiver, not having surgery until June, expected to be put on PUP, miss at least the first couple months of the season. This is an ankle that, you know, he had injured last year, then he re-injured it. And I've seen some reports that the Saints aren't happy. Have you ever had an issue like this where a guy, for one reason or the other, waited so long to do something medically that it really affected his ability to perform and, and to get the money, earn the money you guys are paying him? 
Yeah, no, I don't remember the timing like this. I've had issues in the past where the doctor's an issue, team doctor versus their doctor, teamed opinion versus their opinion, those kind of things. But never the waiting. This seems like tense between him and the Saints, and this seems like it's been going on, Ross, since he signed the contract, which I think was a year ago with this major extension top of the market for him. Um, doesn't seem that all is well with that relationship, but leverage is everything. I think he's got the contract now, so he's got the contract, so I'm sure he feels emboldened to do this. Had he not had the contract, he wouldn't be doing this. A guy that doesn't have a contract, Andrew, Zach Wilson. There's exactly two, I think, rookies that haven't been signed yet as of 8.47 a.m. this morning, unless he just signed. Zach Wilson and Trey Lance, and reportedly the Jets and Zach Wilson's camp are fighting over offsets and signing bonus cash flow when he gets paid it. And look, I, I, I don't like to be that guy, Andrew, that says typical Jets. <laughs> but, you know, Trey Lance isn't going to start for the Niners anyway. It, 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 this, this seems like typical Jets. It just seems like the offset and the signing bonus cash flow. I mean, doesn't seem that important in the big scheme of what they're trying to do here with this new franchise quarterback. Yeah, you know, I say it every year. The CBA has been predetermined in terms of money, but that doesn't mean there isn't any negotiation because these are the two areas for top picks that's always the issue. <clears throat> offset, for people who don't know what offset is, that if somewhere down the road they cut Zach Wilson any place somewhere else, does the guarantee offset against what the Jets owe? So the Jets are arguing that, yeah, we want to get our money back. If he can't, he can't double dip. If we cut him in year four and he plays somewhere else, he can't double dip. It's a precedent thing, right? The Jets aren't so concerned about Zach Wilson, but the next pick, the next pick, the pick after that, using it against them. So that's where we are on that. And the cash flow and the bonus, you know, players want it right now. Teams want to set, set it out over years. So we're stuck there. Um, how do they resolve this? You look at precedent. What did the third, pick, second pick get before? What kind of cash flow have the Jets done before? I guess my comment is it'll work out. You know, the longest one of these was Boza back a few years ago. Same two issues, same two issues. Um, but for those wondering, you know, again, if Zach Wilson misses a week, it's not going to affect him. I mean, I know he's the starting quarterback, but I've learned in my old age not to get too worked up about these things. What about, Andrew, last one, Xavier Howard. Miami. Yeah. This is interesting. We got a bunch of guys, Chandler Jones, Jamal Adams, Xavier Howard, not happy with their contracts. And they've they've made that clear, but they showed up anyway because there's a new fifty thousand dollar per day mandatory fine. You can't forgive it. And Xavier Howard even said, and I tweeted last night at Ross Tucker NFL, he's just there, so he won't be fined. So he can't be fined. He doesn't want to be there. I guess it's good that these teams don't have players holding out, but I wonder how good it is to have guys that are really unhappy and voicing that displeasure in and around the team every day. Yeah, I don't know if I – I'm not going to take credit for terming this. I remember using it a couple years ago with Jalen Ramsey, but the hold in. So now we have the hold in because of the fines, because the CBA hammered over the head to all the rookie stuff and said you got to be there, uh, not only rookie stuff, but the, the the holdout stuff. So here we are, and he's just there so he won't get fined. If he wasn't, if the CBA didn't have that, he'd be out. So owners have to look and say, is this better? I don't know. I guess it is because for the owners, because he's there. Um, now I just saw Brian Flores, the coach of the Dolphins, saying we think we can work it out. So we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll see. I mean – the, the worry for me with teams is that it's not money, right? Money can be solved. I said this four months about Aaron Rodgers, that it's deeper than that. And if Xavier and Howard's deeper than money, that's where the issue is. That was Jalen Ramsey three years, two years ago. Um, we'll see how it resolves. But 
The problem is when you have an unhappy player, they infect the team with unhappiness. So that's uh, the leverage point for these players. Check him out on social media at Andrew Brandt, of course. And the Business of Sports podcast. Cannot wait to listen to that one. Probably Saturday morning as I'm driving. I cannot wait to hear the full breakdown of everything Aaron Rodgers and more. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Ross. You know who else we need to thank today? And I tweeted this yesterday, at Ross Tucker NFL, Crocs. If you don't have Crocs, you're missing out. Visit Crocs.com to take your pick of wildly comfortable and lightweight clogs, sandals, and slides. I posted a picture yesterday of sandals, slides, clogs. Um, I, I wear these things like every second of every day. I love them. Those of you that watch on YouTube, I've shown them before. I post the picture on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Love Crocs and love that the Crocs Hoop Draft Prediction Challenge is coming. And dare we say free to play on DraftKings.com. Make all the right picks and a slice of 10 G's could be yours. Just enter the game page on draft day and see just how well your pick predictions hold up to the real ones. At the end of the draft, winners will be paid out cold, hard cash. Based on how many you guessed right, visit DraftKings.com slash Crocs on Thursday, July 29th, that's tomorrow, to make your basketball draft predictions. We hope your future is full of comfort, that's what Crocs are, and possibly full of money. Learn more at DraftKings.com slash Crocs. Crocs. Tux takes. Good morning, Ross. Let's start with well, what you and Andrew were talking about. Any other thoughts about Aaron Rodgers and that whole situation in Green Bay, including Randall Cobb? Well, I mean, look, and I had already tweeted this this morning. I feel like the Texans have a bunch of leverage. I don't know what's going on there, but they know everybody's saying it's a done deal. It's done. Cobb to the Packers. Well, it's not done. There's been no so so something's holding it up. Maybe the pack, uh, the Texans are trying to squeeze every little ounce out of that orange they can. And also, I need more clarity on whatever it is Adam Schefter said yesterday about Aaron Rodgers getting his money next year, no matter what. Like he can retire and still get. It. I don't really know what that means, and I'm hoping people can clarify over the next couple of days. Tux takes. Speaking of Houston, your thoughts on Deshaun Watson's predicament? Well, it's just so complicated on so many levels. You know, it's an unprecedented business opportunity to get a player of his, you know, talent and pedigree at that rate. But then there's criminal risk. There's league discipline risk. I mean, it's just... Very hard to sort through. I will say this. His attorney coming out on Monday, Rusty Harden, and saying, hey, it's not just civil. He's got 10 criminal complaints against him, too. I don't think I've ever before, Bri, seen a lawyer come out and like talk about how much bad stuff is going on with their client. And I think he did that because they're trying to force the Texans' hand to lower their asking price so Deshaun Watson can be traded. But for a lawyer to come out and say, don't forget, he might go behind bars. He might get, he might have to be guilty of these. I mean, he might get criminal charges. I, I've never seen that before. Tux takes. Got some contract extensions in Washington for D lineman Jonathan Allen and tight end Logan Thomas. So Jonathan Allen's just been a really good player for a long time. I mean, he was really good in college, strong, powerful, good with his hands. He's been really good in Washington. They know they have a good thing with their defensive line, so they're going to keep that going and renew those guys, give Allen a bunch of money. The Logan Thomas story I love. I mean, this guy totally flamed out as a quarterback, reinvented himself, and – now gets over $10 million fully guaranteed on a three-year, $24 million deal. That is not easy to go from quarterback 
to an NFL starting tight end that gets that kind of money. You're competing against all these guys that have been tight end their whole life. Hint, hint, Tebow. But I, I'm thrilled for Logan Thomas. He earned it. He, he got that stuff the hard way. Tux Takes. Adam Schefter reported 13 NFL staffers and four players tested positive for COVID-19, even though they're fully vaccinated. And that list presumably includes Colts head coach, Frank Reich. Right, because the Colts and Frank Reich came out with the statement that Rent Reich tested positive, even though he's fully vaccinated. And as a result, Reich's out for like 10 days. or well, I guess he just has to have two days in a row of negative tests since he's fully vaccinated. I think, Bri, I see some comments from people that I'm not sure totally understand. So, like, you can still get COVID if you're vaccinated. It just makes the odds much, much better that you don't get it. You can also still transmit COVID even if you're vaccinated. It just makes it a lot less likely. Like everything we do, everything we're talking about is the odds, the percentages, and the vaccine makes it less likely that you get COVID. If you do get it, you'll, your symptoms won't be as bad. And if you do get it, you're less likely to transmit it. So the vaccine helps in all three of those areas. I feel like when people see this, oh, people still got it. See, the vaccine doesn't work. Um, it's unfortunate because I don't think they totally really understand what it is that vaccines, and in this case, the COVID vaccine does. It just helps in every way. It doesn't make it 100% foolproof. It just is uh, much better in every of the in all three of the categories I mentioned. Tux takes. Some other news includes Vikings waving Jalen Twyman with. Uh, with NFI designation, Caesars becoming the new naming rights partner for the Superdome in New Orleans. 20-year deal there. Jesse James signs with the Bears, $2.15 million, $1.65 fully guaranteed. The Saints sign wide receiver Chris Hogan and Dolphins cornerback Xavier Howard formally requests to trade just so he won't get fined, as you and Andrew discussed. I'm just here so I won't get fined. So Twyman's the guy that got shot four times. So... uh you know, I think he's on the NFI list for the Vikings, and depending on when they clear him, they would not have to pay him for this year. The Caesars Superdome, is there is it is is gambling legal in Louisiana, Bry? There's casinos uh that that operate. Uh so right downtown New Orleans, there's a Harris Casino. By the way, Harris part of Caesars. Um as far as DraftKings and fantasy, that has been on the ballot. That actually passed and should be up and running in time for football uh, or at some point by the end of the year. So it's it's getting there. So there's been casinos. They just legalized sports betting. Correct. Because so the, 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 the casinos didn't have sports books until now. No, no sports books. And this is not – it will be up to the individual parish or in every other state, uh, county. Right, right, right. So, but there's no Caesars down there. There's just Harris. Correct. Interesting. Um, Jesse James, I feel like the Bears had a lot of tight ends. I think they wanted, uh, obviously they wanted another one. Um, but don't they have like five dudes right now? So the Saints signing Hogan, Hogan was literally playing professional lacrosse in the uh, PLL, but that doesn't pay like the NFL does, especially with all the benefits and everything. And I'm sure the Saints gave him something to guarantee, you know, to make it worth his while, to make him not just go down there and have to try out at camp. And Xavier Howard, wow. That that statement by him where he said, uh, you know, I didn't fully understand what I was signing when I signed it. That's a rough look for him and his agent to admit that publicly. I didn't fully understand what I was signing when I signed it. Yikes. Um, I do know this. Place any pre-event wager of $1 to be eligible to cast $100 in free credits if America wins any medal this year. Are you guys kidding? 
They're giving you $100 again. Are you kidding? $1 on one Olympic event, and you get $100 if America wins a medal. I mean, what are we even talking about here? What I'm talking about is even money should be epic later today with Chad Millman from the Action Network. Make sure you support all of our sponsors, including our I Think We're Done Here members of Patreon.com slash RT Media, like Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, and HumanHeadNYC.com. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, one 800 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a, de- 